Hey everybody, it's Chris from Rottweiler Performance, and today we're going to show you how to get a Rottweiler intake system into your KTM 790 or 890 Adventure. Hey everyone, thanks for joining me in Rottweiler Garage. Today we're going to show you how to install the Rottweiler intake system into this 890 Rally Adventure. Uh, this will fit the 790 Adventure as well, the R and the S models, they're all pretty much the same. The tools are really basic. You can find them in your stock toolkit. And out of all of our intake installs, this is probably one of the easiest. So we don't want you guys to be intimidated. Just watch this video and we're gonna walk you right through the whole thing. You can also find downloadable PDF instructions on our website at download slash instructions that have a little bit more detail. But outside of that, just follow me through this video and I promise to make it easy on you. Here's the tools you're gonna need for the job. T20 Torx, T25 Torx, T30 Torx, T45 Torx, 6mm socket and extension, 8mm socket, 8mm wrench, 3mm Allen, 4mm Allen, side cutters, and a torque wrench. So step one is going to be extracting the stock air box, so let's get into that now. All right, first we're going to remove the seat, and then we're going to remove the side pods. Side pods will just come off by hand. Okay, next we're going to remove the battery cover here. The only reason to remove this is to access a bolt right here on the side fairing. So this is a T30 Torx. There's going to be one on either side. And this will just pull straight off. Next we're going to get it five bolts on this left fairing. There's one here, 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 and then there's two up here and then the bottom of this pulls out by hand. Now we're just gonna pop this off at the bottom and pull the fairing forward. Okay, next we're gonna be using a T45 Torx and removing the rear rack and the fender will just come with it. You can grab the two pieces together just like this and set them aside. Okay, next we're gonna be using a T30 again and we're gonna remove the two screws on the right-hand side of the seat latch, okay? So it's basically these two screws but on the right-hand side. We're gonna leave these in. Next, we're gonna be removing just this screw here and then the two left-hand screws on the license plate carrier. Okay, next we're gonna be removing the left side passenger peg only. If you're anything like me and you don't like passengers and you've already removed them, you're one step ahead of me. If you haven't, it's two eight millimeter bolts that are a T45 and one six millimeter bolt that's a T30. Okay, next we're gonna be removing the two left hand side bracing bolts. There's a subframe brace right here. We're just gonna remove just the left-hand side, and then we're gonna move on and remove the two lower airbox bolts. Now, we're gonna be reusing all this hardware, especially there's two little hats that are pressed into the rubbers. We're gonna pull those hats out and reuse them later. And these are all T30 Torx. Okay, now we're back to the T45 Torx. We're gonna be removing just this left rear bolt here, and then these two subframe bolts here on the left-hand side, then the left-hand side of the subframe is gonna be ready to come off. What you're gonna do is pivot the rear subframe out, and it comes off just like that. Okay, now we're gonna be removing the stock airbox snorkels. Uh, you can now use these to signal your tribe or toss them in the trash. In the trash! 
Okay, now we're gonna use some side cutters and we're gonna cut four zip ties. There's one back here holding the harness, two up here on the air box, and then one on the crankcase breather. And then one more back here. We're gonna remove all three of these connectors to the license plate. Now it's a good idea, these are just your blinkers. It might be a good idea to take a pen at this point and write a G for green and an R for red, uh, just so you can know which ones to plug them back in. Otherwise it's trial and error when you do, it's not a big deal. Now we're gonna remove the temperature sensor plug. And now we're gonna kind of extract the harness. You don't need to remove any bolts. It'll just kind of pull right out. And we're just gonna put this over the handlebars. Okay, now we're gonna use a T20 Torx and remove the temperature sensor from the stock air box. We will be reusing this temperature sensor. We will not be reusing these bolts here. Make sure when you take it off that the O-ring comes with it. Okay, the first thing we're gonna do is remove the fuel line, which is very easy. Just reach in on either side and pull down on the green retainer. Once that's out, it should come out fairly easily, just like this. And you're gonna to wanna to just move that down to the side right here. Now we're gonna to wanna to pull the crankcase breather off the top of the air box and we wanna extract it through. This hose right here is the same hose. So we wanna pull it through. And again, this is just to kinda of get some things out of your way when you're putting the stock air box back in. We'll feed this back through later. Okay, next we're gonna be working on the left side hose clamp on the throttle body. This is where the air box boot meets the throttle body right here. Now, from model to model, you'll, you'll find these rotated in different spots, but we got lucky on this model and it's just right here. This is where you're gonna wanna use the six millimeter socket, and you're only gonna wanna turn it maybe three to four turns out. And the reason is there's a collar in there. And if you unscrew too far, the collar will fall off and you'll never find it in there. Okay, next we're gonna loosen the same hose clamp on the right-hand side. This one's always easy to find. It's always right here. And again, same rules, just twist it maybe three, four times. That's all you need. Okay, at this stage we're ready to remove the stock air box. Now occasionally, uh, the velocity stacks will actually get stuck to the throttle bodies depending on the age of the bike. It's not a big deal, we're gonna pull them out of the air box anyway, so if they get stuck, you can just remove them after the air box comes out. So we'll see what happens with this one. You're just gonna pick it up like this and swing it out to the side. Just like that, so they both came off just like that. You can see this one right here just came out a little bit, but it doesn't matter. We're gonna pull them out anyway. Okay, on the bottom of the airbox, you'll find these drain boots. We're just gonna remove these, and these are gonna be installed in the Rottweiler intake system. Okay, at this stage, you wanna hold the airbox just like this, wrap your thumbs around this area here, and then grip it with your fingers here, throw it in the trash. In the trash! Okay, now we've reached part two of the intake installation where we're now reassembling the parts. We're done with disassembly and we're gonna show you how to assemble the air boxes. So to my left here, we have the pro version, which is plastic. Now these contain threaded inserts in it already. Just to the left of that, we have our rally version, which don't have threaded inserts, so we have to put nuts on the backside. So depending on the kit you got, there's gonna be some different hardware in there. And what we're gonna do is show you how to assemble the filter plate right now. Okay, now that we've introduced the two types of air boxes, we're gonna show you how to put them together. So in the kit, you're gonna get a filter plate like this, and there is a rubber gasket on the back side of it. It's gonna to wanna to attach to the air box like this with the tabs hanging down. So the pro version has threaded inserts. You're just going to get six flathead torque screws. It's a T25, and you're just gonna put those in these six spots right here. Don't use Loctite or anything like that because then if you, they, they might spin, they might lock into the uh, threaded insert. So actually you just lubricate them and then put those in and you just wanna compress the gasket all the way around. Now on the rally version, uh, we use nuts on the backside because we can't put threaded inserts in the carbon fiber. So the filter plate is gonna attach in the same fashion, except this time you're gonna put the smaller nylocks that are not flanged on the backside and then put the T25 flathead Torx into the front side using an eight millimeter wrench and a T25 Torx. And you're gonna tighten those down again until the gasket is compressed. Okay, now that the filter plate is tight and the gasket's been compressed, we're gonna work on getting the velocity stacks into the front of the airbox. 
Now, the only difference between the Rally and Pro versions is that the Rally is going to have a foam gasket on the front. That's all you need to know. The Pro version won't have this. It doesn't need it. So what you're going to want to do is just fold the Velocity Stack uh, tapered part in there, and you're going to work it in, and you're going to hit the first flange. Now, right about here, you're going to see a little opening, and this is designed to locate on the stock airbox. We're going to start here. So what we want to do is being very careful of, of the foam. Again, you won't have this on the Pro versions, but on the Rally, there's some foam. We want to kind of pull backwards and push this flange down in the hole and then start to work the flange in there. So you can do this with a screwdriver or a blunt instrument. We have this little tool right here. Um, but if you do it right, you'll be able to see really how easy this is. And once it's about halfway in, and you've kind of coaxed it in there, it'll start kind of pulling itself in. And you should hear this thing pop in just a second, right there. So once that's done, move it around a little bit and you'll hear the flange on the inside of the airbox kind of seat itself, and then you can move to the next one, it's that easy. Okay, at this point, you want to look down the intake and center the velocity stack so you can see the kind of move back and forth. Just get them centered, and that's about it. Okay, now we're gonna install the temperature sensor. This just goes right in the side. You're gonna want the locking tab pointing up. Just put it in right here, and you're gonna locate two bolts in the hardware pack that have a small locking patch on them, a little yellow locking patch. And those are gonna be your new temperature sensor bolts. You don't need to over tighten these, snug is fine. Okay, now we're gonna install the hose clamps on the throttle body boots, which are the same thing as the velocity sacks we just installed. Now, what you're gonna wanna do is unscrew the bolts until they're about flush with the backside. This little spacer is what we talked about before that we didn't want to fall out. So back those off until they're flush with the backside, and then you're gonna wanna install them on the boots pointing outward at about 10 o'clock and two o'clock. And they should look about like that. And the reason for that is so when we install it, they'll clear everything and pop right on the bike. All right, everybody, we're on the home stretch now. This is part three of the installation, and we're gonna be putting this beautiful thing into this beautiful thing, which is the best part. So I'm gonna share with you all the tips and tricks that I have that I've learned from putting a few of these in there. And outside of that, we're gonna be buttoning her up and we'll be done. Okay, now it's time to get the air box into the motorcycle. And what we have to do is get the Velocity Stack boots over the back of the throttle body. Now there's gonna be a couple things in your way. The first thing we've already removed, which is the crankcase breather right here. We pulled this out the side, and that gets one thing out of your way. The other thing is there's a harness, a piece of the harness hanging down right here that is the fuse block harness. So if you grab the fuse block and just lift it vertically off its keepers, it's going to move that harness out of your way, and it's going to open up the whole throttle body area. So you've noticed we put these hose clamps at about 10 and 2 o'clock and pointing outward, and that's so we can kind of get them down through the frame and get access to them easily. So we're going to bring that in there as gently as possible. It may take a couple tries because sometimes the hose clamps do fall off if they hit something, but uh, you're going to got to get it in there and you'll feel it. Just start to kind of feel it around and you'll feel the boots register over the throttle bodies. Once you feel that, you can grab it from the bottom and pop it on just like that. And we're ready to tighten those band clamps. Okay, at this point, we're going to be doing a few things in this area and they're similar to what we did before, except now we're putting things back on. The first thing we're going to do is tighten both of the hose clamps on either intake boot. So we're going to do the left side here. And we're not going to show you the right side. You just go the other side and tighten that. And then we're going to take the crankcase breather and feed that back through. So you're going to push that kind of up towards this area. You can feel for it right here and work it through. And that's going to travel underneath the fuel delivery spigot right here. We're going to put that on the spigot on the top of the airbox. Then we're going to take the fuel line and snap that back on. So you're going to want to push it until it clicks like that, and then get underneath it and press the green locking tab up and give it a tug and you're done. All right, now we're to the point where in your hardware kit, there's a piece of uh, EPDM foam right here. And we include this to wrap around the backside of this fender well right here. And all this really does is keep dirt and debris uh, from being able to splash up through here. So you're gonna wanna make sure that this is clean uh, and then pull off the sticky back strip. 
find your center, and you're gonna to wanna to apply this just above this rim line right here, all the way across. All right, now we're gonna install what we call the splash guard, and that's this piece right here. It might help to remove the bolt on the opposite side of this one here to allow a little bit of play in the fender well. And what we're gonna do is the boot should be tied on this air box by now. So you can kind of lift this up a little bit and you're gonna to wanna to work it down into its spot. Just like that. And there's four holes right here that we're going to put some bolts and nuts through. Um, those should line up perfectly. So we've got it in, easy as that. And then you wanna make sure the plastic here is on the outside and that's it. Now we're gonna bolt the airbox filter plate to the splash guard, which is kind of a bulkhead. There's four holes here, 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 and here that we're gonna put the button heads through. So in your hardware kit, you should have some button heads, some nylon washers, and some flanged five millimeter nuts. So the button heads are gonna go from front to back, then you're going to insert the nylon washer, and then you're going to thread on the flanged nut and do the same for all four. To access this one on the right-hand side, it's a good idea to remove the two bolts on the rear of the right-hand side fairing and pull it back and come back through this way. These don't need to be very tight, they just need to be snug. Okay, now we're gonna put the electrical harness back in and we designed this airbox to where you can actually run it low and it kind of hides it. It makes everything up here a lot more attractive. Now you can keep this high if you want and zip tie it to the frame, but if you'd like to uh, make it kind of disappear, what we did is we designed it to where it tucks in this piece of plastic here and stays low. And you can actually take the alarm plug right here and tuck that beneath the fender well. And then we're gonna plug in the temperature sensor and make sure that this harness right here travels above the cross member. Okay, now we're ready to reinstall the left side of the subframe and we're gonna take a pair of side cutters and there's a very small zip tie that's holding the seat latch cable right here and we're gonna to wanna to cut that. The reason for that is we're going to reposition the cable in this area. Stock, it comes down this area. We're gonna want it to come through there. And the other note I'm gonna tell you is that this harness right here is gonna to wanna to be above this little rubber bumper here. Uh, this used to insert in the stock airbox. You can leave these on. They'll stay on because they'll just kind of point right at the airbox. So we're going to start bringing the subframe in and kind of bringing all these pieces together. So here with my left hand, I'm bringing the, the harness above that little rubber bumper. We're also aligning the bottom of the subframe here with the cross member. And as we're coming in, I'm going to push that cable into that area. We're there. Okay, now we're gonna reinstall the subframe side bolts, which are here, here, a small five millimeter bolt here, and an eight millimeter bolt back there. The short one goes in the top. The torque on the subframe bolts is 50 Newton meters, and then the torque on the bolt in the rear is 25. Okay, now we're gonna mix up a little bit of hardware. So if you remember earlier, when we took the airbox bolts out of the bottom that went through the subframe into the airbox, there was this spacer and this five millimeter bolt. And then we have this washer here and then this five millimeter nut that is included in our kit. So there are six of these, four of them got used up on the filter plate and you should have two of these nuts left and one of these washers. So what we're gonna do is something a little bit different. This spacer is now gonna be inserted through the top down through the hole in the bottom of the splash guard. We're gonna put the washer on the bolt. We're gonna come up from the bottom and then put the nut on the top. And then we're gonna tighten that. And then we have the two airbox drains that we pulled out of the stock airbox. Those are gonna be put in the same fashion in the Rottweiler intake system from the bottom. Now we're gonna put the two bolts back into the seat bracket on the right-hand side. Now we're gonna plug back in the electrical connections at the back of the bike, starting with the four pin. Then you've got the two turn signals, which are green and red. And if you uh, wrote down which one was which in the beginning and wrote it on the side of the connectors, then you're way ahead of the game. 
If you didn't, you're just gonna have to do a little bit of trial and error. You got a 50% chance of getting it right. Okay, everybody, we're on the final stretch of part four of the intake installation. This is the filter right here. This is the heart of the whole system. Now, we send these with the kits dry, and mainly because everyone's got their own brand of oil that they like the best, and we don't wanna pre-oil it with something and then find out you don't have the proper cleaner for that. So if you're wondering why they come dry, that's why. And next, we're gonna show you how to properly get it on the cage and get it seated. You're gonna take the cage and just push it through, just like this. And the first thing we do is get the cap seated on the nose of the filter cage. And then just hold it in the center and work your way around like any other filter. And then when you're done, you wanna kinda of pull it and make sure that everything is, is pulled over the base of the filter cage, nice and evenly. Then you're gonna grab the filter cage bolt, push it through, and then we're gonna drop it on. Bolt will find its thread. And the first thing you wanna do is make sure that the seat is tucked into this flange right here, the seat of the uh, filter. Once that's in, and you can check around the backside and you can feel it as well with your hand, and then you're ready to drive the bolt in. Now, it's gonna help if this thing has been oiled and there's oil between the rubber and the bolt, otherwise it gets a little sticky. So a little bit of grease or a little bit of filter oil on the backside of this is great. And now the filter's installed. All right, everybody, that's it for this install. I truly hope that this was a lot easier than you thought it was gonna be. That's the purpose of these videos. We didn't wanna bore you by putting on all the rest of the bits and pieces. You should be able to handle that on your own. And you should really only have two bolts left over, and those are the two little black wood screws that held in the temperature sensor. Outside of that, we reuse all the rest of the hardware. As far as the filter itself goes, a lot of people have questions about mapping. You don't have to remap this bike. You want to, remapping is always a good thing, but you don't have to. Uh, there's still significant horsepower gains to be had with this, but if you remap, we can also answer those questions too uh, if you give us a call. So our technical guys are always waiting and happy to help you out. So outside of that, please subscribe. There's a subscribe button here somewhere. And there's only one last thing we want to ask you to do. Let's go out and ride.